on the boat start. Let's play boat start. Good job, you know. Yeah, nice. Doing a good job. Well, uh, two, two for free. Two for free. One, two, three, one, two. <laughs>
attention, please? May I have your attention, please? May I have your attention, please? Welcome to the 73rd commencement exercises of Claremont McKenna College. Please silence your cell phones and other devices and stand and join me in welcoming the Claremont McKenna College class of 2022.
For our graduates, today not only marks the accomplishment, the realization of many of your goals from the past few years, but it also marks an important moment of transition. Today stands as a conclusion of a chapter and the beginning of the next, a moment of pause in the space between. In the Jewish tradition, when you are studying one book of the Torah, and you finish one book and go to start the next, you fill the pause between the two by reciting the phrase, chazak, chazak, venit chazek, meaning, be strong, be strong, and our strength will grow. In the pause between chapters, we recognize the wisdom, the successes, the strength that we gained from that one chapter, and we take all that we gained as a launching pad uh, into even more growth in the next. In this celebration, this pause between the chapters in your life, we say to you, chazak, chazak, venit chazek. May you draw strength and pride from your accomplishments, and may you continue to grow in that strength of self as you move forward. We'll conclude with a prayer. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, shehachianu v'kiyamanu v'higiyanu l'azman hazeh. Blessed are you, source of the universe, who gives us life, sustains us, and allows us to reach this sacred and special moment. Amen. Yeah, please be seated. Good afternoon to everyone here and to those watching around the world. It is my pleasure to welcome our trustees, honored guests, members of our faculty, staff colleagues, family, friends, and especially our brilliant and distinguished graduates of the class of 2022. This year, Claremont McKenna College celebrates its 75th anniversary. I was a sophomore at CMC when we celebrated our 50th anniversary. Stark Hall did not exist, nor did Kravis Center, Roberts North or Roberts South, the North Quad Pods, Crown Hall, Claremont, soon to be Valley Hall, or Roberts Pavilion. There was no RDS, no public art, no care center or scholar communities, no advocates or one gen or open academy or source. Commencement was celebrated on the lawn where Crown Hall now sits. During that 50th anniversary year, President Stark spoke loftily of the future of the college, a vision for growth and progress and always, always an unwavering commitment to our mission to graduate responsible leaders. I remember feeling incredulous. How could a school of our youth and size possibly achieve all of the goals set forth? Yet for the last 25 years, I have watched one goal after another be accomplished with intentionality and purpose and an eye toward even greater heights. So in this 75th year, I hold nothing but conviction that the vision set forth by our current Board of Trustees and President Chodosh will also be achieved, fueled by the leadership of our brilliant faculty and with the support of our staff and students and alumni. We will reach our campaign goals. We will develop a new integrated science center. We will build the Roberts campus. And our students will continue to excel in every possible way. Graduates, as I look at your many faces today, I am reminded of the dueling trepidation and exhilaration I felt when I graduated from CMC. I assure you, you are ready. This class is something special, enduring the loss and chaos wrought by COVID-19. You were forced to leave campus and challenged to adapt and somehow to persevere. And in the midst of the pandemic, you chose to stay anchored to one another and to this location, despite your physical dislocation. You endured, you overcame, modeling kindness and grace along the way, and you have emerged stronger for it. As you now launch into the next phase of your lives, know that there is always a tether guiding you back here to this campus, to these people, the life lessons you learned at CMC. Today, our speakers will share reflections ranging from self-deprecating humor to dreams of an imminent future. 
to the inspiration of how we respond and support others and persevere in our lowest moments. They will speak of belonging and dreaming and traveling vast distances to prepare for a future not yet conceived. Our graduates will then cross the stage to receive their well-earned diplomas, and we will close our ceremony with an inspired charge from President Todosh. It is my pleasure to welcome Elizabeth Morgan to the stage. Honored guests and graduates, would you please rise and join me in singing CMC's alma mater, a song that has meant so much to our students over so many years. Yasukochi, the elected class speaker to the podium. Jason, the floor is yours, sir. Is this uh, camera one right there? You got my cue cards? Thank you. Um, thank you, Claremont McKenna College, for holding this wonderful event. Um, I mean, this tent looks amazing. I feel like a spaceship has landed in the middle of parents. And to the class of 2022, I am deeply honored to have been selected to be your commencement speaker. Look, everybody, I am going to come completely clean here. I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> like any good CMC student, when I applied to this prestigious position, I mostly did it for ego. <laughs> so now I find myself having to say something meaningful in front of thousands of honored guests. And I face myself, I, excuse me, I find myself facing one big issue. Most commencement speakers speak because they have great reputations and they impart great wisdom, right? Steve Jobs, David Foster Wallace, Danielle Wood. When I listen to these people, I listen intently because they have experience, they have wisdom, they have name brand recognition. Guys, I don't have name brand recognition. I didn't even make it onto the CMC Instagram page. Four years. <laughs> Lindsay Larson, where are you at, man? <laughs> and so when I walk up to the stage, there's just this little voice in my head, right? It says, know your place, you know? You don't have that name brand recognition. You don't have that experience. You shouldn't be here. 
But when I look back at these strange, and let me say strange, four years at Claremont McKenna, I can't help but think that no one at this school knows their place. I mean, we are a very eclectic group of people, and in many ways, we don't like to do what I think we're expected to do. There's a lot of ways where we don't follow our role. You know, the first can be an image. When someone says, liberal arts student, right? I mean, I'm thinking, unkempt beard, they have infinite jest in a New Yorker tote bag, <laughs> zero personality. I'm talking about Pomona College students. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I love Pomona, I love them. Great, great group of people. Look, CMC students, we got personality, all right? You don't, you don't go scootering across campus in a suit at 9 a.m. for your accounting Zoom unless you have personality. You don't have 99 problems at 100 days unless you have personality. We also don't follow our role in discourse, you know? At the average school, I like to think, most people, they stay quiet. They don't like to give their take, keep their head low. People here, I mean, they love to give blazing hot takes, guys. I mean, have you seen PPE majors? I'm, I'm pretty sure if you asked a PPE major, half of them would say that they could run the country better than the president, and the other half would say they could run the earth better than God. <laughs> Honestly, though, you guys, look, I, I, I jest, but you guys are regularly brilliant, and I mean that, and, and the reason why I never learned how to know my role was because I was surrounded by so many intellectually curious, funny, and contradictory people who refused to follow their expected boundaries. I mean, this is a place where our primary newspaper, The Student Life, no offense to the Claremont Independent, um, The Student Life, it's called The Student Life, even though everyone knows we're not students, we're just in between internships. This is a place where someone will be by far the most thoughtful person in your seminar on Wednesday, and then they'll go out and win Skyax on Saturday. Shout out to the Nas, baby. Come on. I saw the lacrosse team. This is a place where a history major can become a management consultant. Where a biology major can become a management consultant, <laughs> where media studies and English majors can become management consultants. <laughs> In all honesty, though, um, I really have come away with a deep love for this place because this wonderful class of people continue to defy my expectations. As much as I've poked one of us here, I've learned so much in the past, and not just because of the professors, although the professors and faculty are brilliant. It's because I'm surrounded by such a unique set of peers who teach me not just in the classroom, but on lazy afternoons on parents' field, late night computer lab discussions, or um, I forgot what the last one was there, sorry. <laughs> and so it's not really my place to do this, but I do want to leave us all with a mandate. When we go out and leave this strange place called Claremont McKenna College, don't just do what other people expect you to do. We are at our best not when we move when the tide tells us to, but when we're contradictory and outside of the box. So please, let's go out and let's be our unpredictable, complex, and most importantly, our completely brilliant selves. I cannot wait to see how we turn out. Thank you. Guys, that was insane. Like, we picked an amazing class speaker. Um, thanks, Jason.
Well, my name is Sobe Chuku Tani Toluwa Mina Masala Ore Oluwa Iwaje, and I had the honor of serving as a senior class president this past school year. <laughs> So the question that faces me is one that I know many of us has thought about and talked about during our time here at CMC. It's actually the question or questions President Chodosh posed to us when we arrived on campus. Why are we here? Why are we here? And why are we here? They know it. <laughs> well, the answer to that are things that some of us were blessed with pretty early, but most of us will soon come to discover as we go about our various paths. How about we reflect instead on what we've done? When we all came to this campus in 2018, some of us in 2017 or 2019, God only knew the tumultuous path that we would take to get to this very point. From the student losses over our first two years to this year of having to maintain the weight of keeping every CMC tradition alive, to having little to no time studying abroad, to a life without scripts, lunch, and mud brunch, so sad, and obviously the global pandemic, we have faced an extremely unique battle. Though we may not have conquered it, we came out alive. We are coming out uniquely prepared to drop everything and leave any place at any given time. We are coming out uniquely prepared for lifestyle transitions at the drop of a hat. We are coming out uniquely prepared for immense disappointment. And only God knew that we were the ones who would be able to handle this. We were the perfect class to be here at this time. We were the ones that were chosen, and some say sacrificed, but I'll say chosen, because we were strong enough, because our bonds were loving enough, and because we cared enough about each other. Class of 2022, I am so grateful for each and every one of you. I've learned so much from you, and I've grown mu so much with you. I feel like I've changed a lot over these four years, and you all have consistently pushed me on, asked probing questions, loved me, and were willing to have those tough conversations. For that, I will forever be grateful. While I can go on longer about how amazing our class is, because it's true, um, and all of my gratitude for each and every one of them. I want to take the time to introduce our keynote speaker, Professor Danielle Wood, who has embodied all of these great characteristics. Like the class of 2022, Professor Wood chases down her dreams. As a girl growing up in Florida, Wood became intrigued by NASA and the rocket she saw lighting up her childhood sky. She followed this dream all the way to MIT as a professor of aeronautics. Like the class of 2022, she expands her worldview by learning from other cultures. Over the course of her life, she has grown from the community-based collaboration and teachings in Benin, Brazil, Ghana, and Indonesia. With an advanced degree in policy to add to her arsenal of intellectual tools and her personal research in Africana studies, she looks at space for ways to improve conditions on Earth. Like the class of 2022, she does an incredible amount of unrelated things. Currently, Professor Wood integrates a mastery of space engineering, sustainability, and policy as she leads student researchers and professor, professional staff on the mission of advancing justice in Earth's complex systems using designs enabled by space. Like who I know the class of 2022 to be, she centers her work on a sustaining love for people and draws on her values to navigate the world and her career. She inspires us today. Please join me in welcoming Professor Danielle Wood to the stage. I feel myself in need of the inspiring strains of ancient lore, my heart to lift, my empty mind to feed, and all the world explore. I know that I am old and never can recover what is past, but for the future may some light unfold and soar from age's blast. 
I feel resolved to try. My wish to prove my calling to pursue or mount up from earth into the sky to show what heaven can do. My genius from a boy has fluttered like a bird within my heart, but could not thus confined her powers employ, impatient to depart. She, like a restless bird, would spread her wing, her power to be unfurled, and let her songs be loudly heard and dart from world to world. This poem was written by George Moses Horton, who was born in 1798 as an enslaved person on a tobacco farm in North Carolina. Against many odds, Horton taught himself to read and earn money selling and composing poetry, especially engaging with the community of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Through collaboration with local novelist, Caroline Lee Whiting Hentz, Horton was able to publish poetry and became one of the early black poets of the American South. The poems denounced slavery and argued for a vision of a country built on freedom. Now, one of the reasons I love to read the poetry of George Moses Horton is the imagery that brings our minds literally beyond the earth, darting from world to world. I join Horton in his longing to allow this restless bird within my heart to spread her wings. Graduates, perhaps you too feel this urging today. Another reason I love the poetry of Horton is that my family has deep roots in North Carolina. Now, Horton died in 1883, so he lived to see the Civil War. He lived to see Reconstruction. He lived to experience freedom beyond slavery. About 200 miles west of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, in a small town called Union Mills, my great-grandfather, Hugh Mills, was born in 1861, spending his first few years as an enslaved person like those before him. But by the time Hugh Mills was passing away decades later, he had borne 24 children maintained a large farm and served as a local pastor. Now, Hugh's children and others in their community were part of the Great Migration, traveling from North Carolina up to northern cities like Cleveland and Detroit, seeking jobs in industry. My maternal grandfather, Victor, who's Hugh's son, left North Carolina as a teenager with a high school education. He entered the restaurant industry and worked his way up as a dishwasher, and after decades of service, became the maitre d' that the top person in charge at a fancy hotel restaurant in the Cleveland Clinic. He was regularly featured on local news broadcasts for his cooking demonstrations, especially, especially the flaming dishes. Now, Victor's daughters, Sharon and my mother, Victoria, dedicated their lives to education, especially to sharing the joy of reading to generations of students. Meanwhile, on my father's side, my great-grandfather in Georgia and his family, they achieved what was nearly impossible in the time period, especially in Georgia in the 1900s. They managed to transition from slavery to sharecropping to land ownership, amassing a farm of 300 acres that our family still holds today. We have this amazing picture of my great-grandfather in 1950, standing on his own land in an awesome farm overalls, looking at his, his area of ownership. Now his daughter, my paternal grandmother Ruby, travels from Georgia into Orlando. Central Florida is the place of opportunity for education, for new careers. Ruby meets my grandfather Leroy, they're in the segregated black high school, the only black high school in Orlando, called Jones High. And later, their children would also attend the same high school, including my father, Tyrone. Now, Lu Ruby and Leroy both graduate from college at Bethune-Cookman College, now university, which is founded by innovator, entrepreneur, and presidential advisor, Mary McLeod Bethune. And so, I arrive here today with all the strength that my ancestors have left with me. My ancestors were not perfect, but they existed. They persisted. They left me with all the complexity and joy and grief of my humanity. I turned 40 this past year, and I take the moment to pause and to feel, to experience the joy of my own heritage. Graduates, each of you arrives at this moment with the beauty, the imperfection, the complexity, of your own heritage story. 
To the Claremont McKenna community, you all arrive at this moment with the history that has shaped this university, this college, and has given you a foundation to build from cautionary lessons as well as from celebrations to design the community that you want in the future. So today I invite you to reflect with me on this moment, to be present with me, especially for the graduates, be present in this moment, to consider with me time. I invite you to remember that we can only act in the present, but we can take up the challenge to be time travelers. And how? How may you ask? Graduates today, and as you go forward in your life, you can be time travelers by existing in the past, the present, and the future. And this will serve you well as you innovate, as you lead, as you grow, as you struggle, and as you create. We learn from the history so we can design the future. All right, class of 2022, I need your help. Stand up for a minute. Stand up. Thank you. Thank you. You're awake. It's good. It's awesome to see you now. You're going to need your help while I'm talking. You don't understand the whole time. Let's get it right at the start. Now, I'm going to keep dialogue with you. I ask you to dialogue back to me. So whenever you hear me say, we learn from history, I will point to you, and I need you to shout really loud, we design the future. All right, and I heard you all shouting earlier when you were getting ready, so I know you got loud voices. We can do this. So let's try a few times. We're going to do three times. We learn from history. We design the future. We learn from history. We design the future. We learn from history. We design the future. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. You can have a seat. We're going to do it again, though, so don't forget. We design the future. It's coming back. Awesome. Stay ready. I will need your help soon. Now, Frances Ellen Watkins Harper was a free black woman born in Baltimore in 1825, who served as a poet, a fiction writer, a journalist, an activist, publishing multiple books of poetry. Her poem called Songs for the People reminds me of the richness of the contributions that you, CMC class of 22, have brought in your years here in your studies. I'll share a brief excerpt of Harper's poem called Songs for the People. Let me make songs for the people. Songs for the old and young. Songs to stir like a battle cry wherever they are sung. Not for the clashing of sabers, nor carnage, nor for strife, but songs to thrill the hearts of men with more abundant life. More abundant life. Graduates, through your time at CNC, all of you have been preparing to make life more abundant for yourselves, for your families, for your communities, and for people around the world. The work each of you has done is preparing you to contribute in all the ways that we have to as society grapples with complex challenges. The work you've already done is impressive, I know, because I was looking at the list of thesis titles you wrote. But even more important is the foundation that you have laid as people who are ready to learn, ready to form new opinions when you're confronted with new data, ready to collaborate with people across disciplines and across borders and across identities. Because, get ready, we're almost ready. We learn from the history, we design the future. Good job, we'll allow it next time. Now, your generation is facing an exciting and sometimes frightening list of new and complex challenges, also new opportunities in areas including climate, human migration, biodiversity, mental health, global wealth inequality, systemic racism, political freedom, the role of the media, and, in case you didn't notice, humankind's expansion beyond Earth into outer space. Now, your senior thesis topics are a great example of the ways you have sharpened skills that the world needs right now. And that is why it is so important that Kimberly Zamora Delgado wrote a thesis for the Environment, Economics, and Politics Department called The Past and Future of Migration, Poverty, and Small-Scale Agriculture in Mexico. Stand up, Kimberly. Considering ways of sustainable agriculture to be part of the tools of the Mexican states to address poverty and migration. That is why it is so important that Andrea Liebenhaus, stand up Andrea, wrote a government thesis called Constitutional Votes of Courage, highlighting the courage elected legislatures to vote 
where they can bring added faith to constitutions. That is why it's so important that Olivia Welsh, let's see Olivia, wrote a public policy thesis demonstrating ways that Affordable Care Act contributed to increasing housing security. That's why it's so important that Skylar Salick wrote an international relations thesis called Liberation Technology in the Age of D Digital Authoritarianism, colon, colon, examining the potential for digital technology to promote democratic practice. Let's give a hand. Exploring whether innovation with technology will play a role as an opportunity, or perhaps as a liability and a tool of oppression. That is why it's so important that Carly Barnhart wrote a thesis called, Does the Weapon of Mass Destruction Impact Masses Equally? Thank you, thank you. Bring that. Examining the proportionate impacts of nuclear weapons, exploring how marginalized communities experience testing, development, and use of nuclear technology. That is why it is so important that Danielle Payne wrote a thesis called The Black Love Fantasy, colon, an analysis of the oppressive white imagination and its effects on black women's portrayals within romance films. Stand up, Danielle. Lovely name, by the way. <laughs> Asking how we can move beyond harmful stereotypes and tropes of black womanhood to create life-giving stories that contribute to the abundant life that Frances Ellen Watkins Harper was describing in her poem, Songs for the People. Congratulations to each of you and your important work. Congratulations to all those that I could not name. Now, your thesis experience and all the things you did in your classes are not just about studying a topic today. We're living in the past, the present, and the future. You are preparing for the complex world that we know you're about to enter and for the future that you will help design. Your turn. We learn from the past. We design the future. I grew up, as you heard, in Orlando, Florida. I did not always know that I have a chance to achieve a position as the first black woman faculty member at MIT's Media Lab or our Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics. In fact, when I was studying, I really didn't see myself as someone that could serve as gaining a PhD and being on faculty. But I was eager as a child to do something helpful. I didn't know what help meant. I had lots of mentors that guided me. But as you heard in the introduction, so thank you, it's true that on, thanks to a lot of mentorship and encouragement, I was standing at NASA's Kennedy Space Center one night in 1999, a hot summer night, and the third night in a row of waiting until midnight to see a launch. And I was inspired to watch Commander Eileen Collins as the first woman commander of a space mission, carrying the Chandra X-ray telescope into space. And somehow, magically it seemed, giving us a chance to peer into distant galaxies. Now, as I entered MIT as an undergraduate, I wanted to study aerospace engineering, be part of this global effort for humanity, traveling and working in space. But I also wanted to ask, what role would I play to make sure that everybody who looked like me around the world, especially black women, but also many people who have experienced marginalization and discrimination, how could we all have opportunities? On the day that I knew I had admission to places like MIT and Harvard, I also knew that people around the world, especially black women, many times could struggle and bring all the same brilliance that I had and not have the same doors open to them that I was experiencing. This led me to volunteer in Kenya at a girls' school and just spend time seeing what life was like for other people. But later, as a doctoral student, I went back to Kenya because I had learned that governments around the world, including in Africa, Latin America, the Middle East, and Asia, were using satellite technology to help improve the lives of their own communities. That today, for example, I have a chance to be invited by the space agency in Kenya to visit with them next month for a conference. And they are also dedicated to space as a tool for their own society. That's how we continue. Your turn. We learn from history. We design the future. Thank you. But wait, I have to stop for a second. Because that story was incomplete. The story made it sound like I'd had a series of beautiful successes and gradually grew in my career. And that would be a disservice if I left you with this. I need you to hear about the rest of the story. Because it would be a disservice if I didn't share with you all my failures, my bad days, the times I didn't live up to my own values, the times I disappointed my loved ones. I have to share with you the time I, I failed my first test as an undergrad at MIT, the times that I didn't finish research projects that I was assigned, the time I left work for somebody else to do, the times that I was really not sure how I'd get up the next day and do my work. The times I sought counseling uh, to make sure I had encouragement to go to the next phase, the times that I applied and applied and applied and applied for positions as a professor and got rejected. You'll have these bad days too. 
But remember, we learn from history, we design the future. And thanks to community, we can move forward. Now here at a liberal arts college, you have some of the magic that I also try to cobble together in my role at MIT of not being bound to one particular discipline or tradition, but having dialogue across these different communities. In my work as an engineer, I'm also in constant dialogue with social scientists. I am the lead for African and African diaspora studies at MIT, and I'm proud to say we will have our first graduate of a major in African and African diaspora studies coming up next month, and I helped to establish this new major which we were missing before. So we're really excited about this next piece, and it's part of my work to ask how can countries around the world benefit both from designing today's space technology to address local needs, but also be a part of the next generation as humans are going to be expanding activities in space. Now, perhaps you know that we use space technology in many ways around the world. We're already using it today in our communications, our positioning. It's helping us with weather forecasts. It's helping us keep track of disasters and fires. It's helping us keep track of public health as air quality uh, improves or dis you know, decreases. And I see in your work here, especially with the new plans for the Department of Integrated Sciences, I see a connection to my work as well. As you heard, our mission statement is that we seek to advance justice in our complex systems using designs enabled by space. Sometimes that means that we're going to take the technology that already exists and make it more useful for people around the world. Other times, we're trying to invent the new technologies that are sustainable, like the use of beeswax as a possible fuel for satellites. And just like you all, we recognize that society is full of socio-scientific challenges. And just like you plan here in this college to leverage computation and powerful tools for discovery and systemic solutions, I want to follow that guide as well. Now, in my work, I want to honor, as I'm preparing to close, one of your alum. When I was getting the invitation to come, I was very excited to join because of a student named Miles Lifson, who graduated from CNC a few years ago uh, with emphasis in both government and also physics. And has brought that to MIT, where I have served as Miles' uh, mentor for the master's thesis and also on his committee for his PhD. Now, Miles and I work regularly on an important issue, which is an example of the challenges that you are inheriting as you become voting adults. And the, one of the challenges we face is that of space debris. You, you're concerned about climate change, right? We have a lot of waste carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. We've also put a lot of waste metal objects uh, in orbit around the Earth. I apologize for that. And now in our next generation, we have to learn how to address this. So Miles, as a, a proud CMC graduate, has brought so much of his strength from this school in our studies. We're constantly leveraging physics and engineering, science and policy. Miles regularly advises me and other faculty on ways to influence US government policy, including drafting a core and official documents that we submit to the government in response to key policy questions. So I'm so proud to represent and to appreciate Miles today. He gave me permission to use his name, and so we're glad to be here together. But he's one of the reasons you can be so proud and see opportunities coming before you. Because we learn from history, and we design the future. As I prepare to close, I want to congratulate Dorka Saka and Sobe Awaje <laughs> on winning the HN and Francis C. Berger Prizes for Outstanding Scholars. This is just an example. I heard of so many wonderful awardees today. Congratulations to all of you. But I so appreciate this idea of just celebrating your essence, your example of what it means to be a student. And as you go forward, keep these four and five and six years of history close to your heart. Because we'll keep learning from history. And it's up to you to join us in designing the future. And I'll close with this reference to Phyllis Wheatley one of the first women to publish a poem here in the United States. Imagination. Who can sing thy force or describe the swiftness of thy course? Soaring through air to find the bright abode, the imperial palace of a thundering god. We on thy pinions can surpass the wind and leave the rolling universe behind. From star to star the mental optics rove, measure the skies and range the realms above. There in one view, we grasp the mighty whole, or with new worlds, amaze the unbounded soul. Class of 22, let's say it one more time. We learn from history, we design the future. Thank you so much.
Dr. Wood, thank you for those inspiring remarks. I'm still working on my future every day, so I really, really appreciated those remarks. It is now my pleasure to confer an honorary degree today pursuant to the resolutions adopted by the Board of Trustees and approved by the faculty. I would like to invite Dr. Wood, Ron Libskind Hadas, the founding chair of CMC's Kravis Department of Integrated Sciences, and CMC's trustee, Donna Neff, to join me for the presentation. <laughs> Dr. Wood, in recognition of your many contributions and achievements as a leader in aerospace engineering and science, its relationship to the improvement of human conditions in our civilization, Claremont McKenna College hereby confers upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto, in token of which we cause you to be vested with the hood of the college ap appropriate to your degree and present you this with citation and accompanying diploma. It is now my pleasure to confer a secondary honorary degree today pursuant to the resolutions adopted by the Board of Trustees and approved by the faculty. Ooh, my page flipping skills have deteriorated. I would like to invite CMC trustee Chris Walker, Shauna Levin, Associate Dean of the Faculty and Crown Professor of Psychology and George R. Roberts Fellow and CMC trustee David Hetz to join me for the presentation. <laughs> Mr. Walker, in recognition of your many contributions and achievements as a leader in business, education, and the humanities, Claremont McKenna College hereby confers upon you the honorary degree of Doctors of Laws with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto, in token of which we cause you to be vested with the hood of the college appropriate to your degree and present you with the citation and accompanying diploma. We have now reached the part of the program that everyone has been waiting for, the conferring of degrees. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Boom. I would like to invite Pre President Chodosh and trustee David Hetz to join me for the conferring of degrees. I ask all the candidates for the master's degree and bachelor's of arts degree to please rise. 
Oh, they're over here already. I'm sorry. <laughs> they moved over there. Okay, I did not adapt the script accordingly, but that's the beauty of a dean of faculty who sees humor in her failures. So there we go. I did it. <laughs> Mr. President, I now have the honor to present the candidates here today, together with others, the degree of Masters of Arts in Finance and the degree of Bachelor of Arts as appropriate, as recommended by the faculty and as approved by the Board of Trustees. By the authority vested in me as president of Claremont McKenna College, I now confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Finance and the degree of Bachelor of Arts as appropriate, as recommended by the faculty and as approved by the Board of Trustees. Graduates, Please move your tassels from the left to right with your right hand and be seated. It is my honor to recognize the graduates receiving a degree of Masters of Arts in Finance and the graduates receiving the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Masters of Arts. Graduates, please come forward as your names are read to receive your diploma and your hood. Olivia Carey. Benjamin Gardner. <laughs> Sung Ha Lee. John Serrano. Kartike Agarwal. <laughs> Jessica Kuna Zamora. <laughs> Sarab Dubash. Audrey Guillotto. Samuel Harrison. Matthew Hines. Samuel Johnson. Alexander Karasinski. Michael Murphy. Alexa Schulten. Viraj Vig. Jerry Rizal Tan Yu. Honored guests. We now welcome your applause for the MA and BMA class of 2022. It is my honor to recognize the graduates receiving degrees of Bachelor of Arts. Graduates, please come forward as your names are read to receive your diplomas. Katherine Adelman.
Ashkan Agassi. Baruch Akdor. Mohammed Aldarmaki. Simon Alexander. Catherine Esther Almenderes Zuniga. Calder Altman. Matias Alvarado. Ajatha Anand. Jackson Anderson. Crystal Chikamara Anyanwu. Umat Arich. Caitlin R.C. T.J. Askew. Amanda Avery. Diego Avila. Jane Baldwin. Carly Barnhart. William Barton. Jordan Bassett. Gabriel Bendiana Acha. Bettina Benitez. Matthew Berkeley. Jennifer Bernardez. Miles Bernhard. Stephen Lalo Barone. Rishi Bhatt. Raj Butoria. Assis Bindra. Jamie Bitts. Joseph Bedoya. Andrew Bragin. Grant Brott. Laura Brenelvirez. Emma Brzozowski. Jess Brown.
Aaron Burke. Ryan Burton. Brooklyn Button. Christina Campbell. Flor Canales Morones. Amadeo Cantu Trevino. Zoe Carlson. Lauren Cashton. Marco Castillo. Jefferson Chang. <laughs> Tiffany Kathleen Charvet. Shreya Chatterjee. <laughs> Leslie Chavaria. Sarah Chen. Nicholas Chi. Aditi Chithre. Mason Chu. Jacqueline Cho. Trevor Christensen. Natalie Clark. William Clark. Kelsey Kara Clark. Nathaniel Coffin. Genevieve Collins. Carolee Corley. Tyler Anthony Craigwell. Neda Noemi Kuku Shoyon. Sofia Victoria de la Pena. Anna Decky. Torben Dees. Jordana Dayton. Jaime Del Rio. Joseph De Leon. Sophia Doan. Grant Donaldson. Robert Driscoll. Flora Degarian. Ruth F.A. Yeah. 
Layla El Masri. David Houston Engelman. Sophia Epstein. McKenna Fall. Jess Fung. Anne Somerville Farley. Simone Flournoy. Katrina Fryherman. Faustine Shufu. Alexandra Futterman. Trinity Rilani Royal Gabato. Julia Garby. Ada Garcia. Miguel Garcia. Maya Ghosh. Simon Ross Gilbert. Sophie May Gitlin. Emma Goldfield. Anna Green. Jonathan Griegel. Chloe Gabay. Tessa Guerra. John Christian Valerie Gachard. Araman Gulati. Max Yule Go. Avnika Gupta. David Gushu. Nayeli Gutierrez Caceres. Maria Gutierrez Vera. Jaden Ha. Daniel Hayon. Sydney Heath. Mason Alexander Hernandez. Grace Hickey. Gage Hornung. Abai Marcos Hauser. Greer Hoyam. Tiffany Rong Rong Hu.
Humphrey Hui. Marco Hui. Teslin Ishi. Yara Cameron Ismail. Emmanuel Harkin. Nandini Jayaram. Lauren Jeans. Isabel Wong Jia. Jacqueline Jones. Edwin Juarez. Jasmine Rochelle Juarez. Lucy Kapner. Tanya Kapoor. Jack Katzman. Evan Kelly. Kayla Catherine Kiani. Daniel Kim. Jin Hyuk Kim. William Kimball. Leo Kitchell. Kaito Komoria. Ananya Konetti. Kyung Koo. Emma A. Kresh. Lauren Marie Kula. Madeline Kwan. Jimena Landa Catan. Natalie Larson. Lindsay Larson. Cindy Lay. Matthew Leader. Michael Lee. Suji Lee. Andrea Liebenhout. Luke Lenhart. Shi Yi Liao. Walter Lim. Dustin Lind. Marilyn Liriano. Woo! 
Robert Liu. Lynette Diana Lucero. Ariel Patricia Sulan Louis. Jacob Anthony Lyle. Linton Liu. Samrath Matra. Ivan Macias Cervantes. Anthony Marubuanu. Rachel McGill. Lynn Mahe. Sanaida Maiche. Emily Malik. Andrew Maltz. Brian Alonzo Marin. Luis Angel Martinez. Paris Maisel. Jacob Mays. Samantha Ann McBride. Spencer McCann. Sebastian McCullough. Dylan McGarvey. Caroline McGinnis. Gabriela Mejia. Madison Menard. Chase Mendel. Marissa Mestakella. Maisie Mills. Nandini Middle. Mary Carmen Montañez. Brooklyn Oceana Montgomery. Ari Moore. Lauta Mora. Scott Cameron Ong Mowit. Alex Mulizen. Callan Muller. Chase Johnson Monroe. Joseph Muscat. Serena Miger. Ahmad Samir Nabi. Yeah. 
Gate Nairn. Drove Narula. Elena Neff. Isabella Marisol Overturf. Axel Ivan Palapa. Nicholas Paris. Karina Park. Noel Montgomery Patterson. Danielle Donna Payne. Raymond Pedroza. Sophia Ann Perez. Robin Peterson. Caroline Phillips. Maria Emilia Vieira de Mata Piasek. Daenerys Iantha Pineda. Rachel Podol. Dylan Porter. Max Ryu Proctor. Frederick Quinn. Hanchi Tso. Samay Rahim. Vasu Rai. Anna Adele Rains. Trishal Raja. Karina Ramirez del Real. Sophia Elizabeth Ramirez Brown. Samantha Ree. Tristan Reese. Courtney Monet Reed. <laughs> Hannah Riley. <laughs> Alicia Reynaga. <laughs> Giselle Alejandra Reynoso. Lauren Richards. Joaquin Riojas Zambrano. Toluani Ewaolua Roberts. Benjamin Sayer Eldred Rodman. Milagros Romero.
Sophia Rose. Benjamin Rosen. Sydney Amira Ross. Harper Rubin. Stephanie Ruelas. Darkon Senani. Dorcas Saka. Curtis Salinger. Guillermo Joel Santos. Styles Satterley. Noah Shaktel. Rachel Sharp Hansen. Harrison Schreiber. Henry Alden Schultz. Lucas Schwally. Riley Scott. Abbas Seltzer. Maya Shaw. Shania Sharma. Yuming Shung. Saskia Shirley. Shreya Shom. Alec Sinek. William Smith. Garrigan Sohomanyan. Elizabeth Song. Jocelyn Song. Annalie Gabriella Suhu. Hallie Spear. Emily Dwyer Spielman. Ryan Stackpole. Jensen Oliver Berg Steady. Carson Stubstad. Jain Tong. Josiah Blue Tarrant. Zachary Robert Taylor.
Tiffany Tang. Dana Tevis. Grant Theoroff. Elliot Thornburg. Christian Thornton. Onwin Marie Tobalski. Eda Topuz. Georgia Beth Tuckerman. Ethan Ting. Sarah Catherine Euland. Abhinav Opal. Sobechuku Tani Tolua Mina Masala Ore Olua Uwaje. Carol Van Schendel. David Soren Thardanian. Rohan Viswani. Laura Vences. Nilla Venkat. Aditya Venkatraman. Luis Verdin. <laughs> Teresa Versen. <laughs> Alejandro Villegas. Vedika Vishveshvar. Janice Latonia Waits. Ashley Wang. Daniel Wang. Dishwin Wong. Eric Warmuth. Robert Luke Webb. Maximilian Johannes Wyrock. <laughs> Olivia Stone Welsh. <laughs> Garrett White.
Adam Wilkinson. Melanie Williams. John Bradford Wills. Alexandra Wilson. Haley Wilson. Andrew Winsinger. Sasha Wolf Sorokin. Benjamin Wolters. <laughs> Natasha Wong. <laughs> Andrew Rafe. <laughs> Amy Shu. Jason Yasukochi. <laughs> Alexander Yun. Kimberly Zamora Delgado. Joaquin Zavala. <laughs> May Pie Za. <laughs> Jennifer Zasena. Anna Pei Zhang. Please join me in congratulating the entire class of 2022! What, what a moment, folks. Here in the largest tent on the entire West Coast. <laughs> Just to be together today in person in three dimensions would be enough. But what a tremendous program. And I close it out today with a charge to the class of 2022. Before I do, I, I want to say how moved I am, how proud I am, by the soaring excellence, the creative adaptability, the iron-forged resilience, and downright goodness in this class, in our families, who have sacrificed so much for everyone to be here, and our entire community in mutual support and common purpose. Today, the cold gym, Theo in your diaspora, 
here is anywhere you want to go. One, the cold gym. Nearly all of our spring scholar leader athletes are competing in the NCAA tournament this week, including today in women's lacrosse, big victory, right? Women's tennis at Case Western. I think they started late. Not sure how that turned out. We'll be celebrating with them tomorrow over in Robert's Pavilion. But it reminded me that in 2017, our Athenas won the first of three national championships. And during the hard-fought tournament, Margot Arnston, an All-American senior on the women's volleyball team, composed a mantra. She whispered it to herself whenever she entered a big cold gym. White walls, metal bleachers, quaking with shouting, screaming fans from other teams. To remind herself that she had no reason to be intimidated, Margot would whisper to herself, I belong here. Margot did not mean I fit in, I conform, I play my role, or Jason, I know my place, I do what I'm expected. She meant I earned the right to compete. I own the opportunity to realize my fullest potential to succeed. No one can deny me a place on the court. I lead my team, and we are not afraid of failing, and we are not afraid of succeeding. After a long march to the finals, with the score 24-22 and the third sweeping set, Margot put down the historic kill to give our Athenas the national championship trophy. I belong here. Now, why do I start with Margot's story today and how she brought heat to the cold gym? Because today, you, class of 2022, you put down the final score. You answer the fundamental question with which we began our long journey together. So they reminded us of it earlier. Why are we here? This moment, in shared purpose, in this singular place, in our mission-driven learning community. Why are we here? Because here we belong. This is never easy. This has been especially hard for us the past few years. In life, in school, in work, we can easily over-listen to the world telling us every reason we don't belong. The neat boxes that confine us, the artificial boundaries that keep us separated and disconnected, telling us what we cannot do or what we're expected to achieve that we don't want to achieve just because of who we are, or where we come from, our race or gender or any identity, our native lands and cultures, the gods we worship, the people we love, the way we talk or look, the resources we lack or have, the schools or places we come from. That world sometimes can be cramped and harsh and artificially bloated and put us in what perceives to be our confining place. This is Jason's main observation today. A place of opaque ceilings we can't break through, windows so small they make us blind to the horizon. The spontaneous social assumptions people carry about others that we all too easily internalize and project about ourselves and onto others in the world. Everything that keeps us from belonging, belonging to one another takes commitment, risk, work, persistence, love, and grace to overcome it. Belonging takes more than just presence or participation. It means opening up to others, helping others open up to us bringing an outsider's perspective to our inner circles, turning our circles inside out to bring others in. It means replacing the artificial barriers that we carry around with us in our heads, barriers that blind us with experiences that help us identify with one another, experiences that bind us. Belonging means finding yourselves in unlikely, even unpopular friendships. It means letting other voices enter your ears and other minds enter your heart. Just look at the exemplars speaking here today. Think of DT 
as a first-gen kid from Colorado who studied biology and earned a place in the CMS Hall of Fame with 11 varsity letters, earned her PhD while working full-time, and all the time, yes. And all the time, somehow became the best dean of students in the country. Think of Sobe's journey, senior class president, winner of the prestigious Berger Award, and so many other honors, and already on her way to Columbia Law School. Think of Jason, through all of his self-deprecating humor, now so well prepared to work where? At the Federal Reserve, and I might add, not as a consultant. <laughs> or our standing keynote speaker today, Dr. Danielle Wood, mastering dance and policy and a whole range of sciences, now looking at how space can improve human conditions on Earth and how we can best prepare for an exciting decade of space exploration we've never imagined before. Now, as each of their voices soaks into this moment, we can hear our own voices, and those of the class of 2022 say, we belong here. Two, Theo in your diaspora. Now, how on earth did you do it when the pandemic disintegrated what here even meant? That was tough. Even our CMC campus-raised labradoodle, Theo, when the campus was closed for 18 months, Pri and I would take Theo for a walk around. He loved having the run of the place, to be sure, but he knew, sadly, that the world had changed. He would sniff at the doors in North Quad looking for his friends. He would go up to the entrance of the Saul Center appearing to look for advice, or maybe, Jason, you're right, for an internship. <laughs> but really, he was just remembering the delicious treats they always give him there. And our only connection with all of you was relegated to two dimensions. Theo even had attended a 2021 thesis surge on my lap in front of Zoom one day. And all of you were cast into some form of student exile. We lost together the last quarter of your sophomore year, your full junior year, and had to endure the, the constraints of this past one. The distancing, the restricted events, the mass, the push outdoors, the hybrid adaptations, the loss of the most treasured of all Claremont privileges, 5C cross dining. And during the time away, many of you had to cope with unconscionable time differences, tough circumstances at home, the loss of loved ones, and somehow, some way, you persisted. You persisted, you studied, you learned, you served, you coached, and trained, and tutored, and worked, and led, and you found your way back to one another. You thrived, and then you returned and started to rebuild the here that we took for granted. Look around, not just at all the outstanding accomplishments in the program, but the enduring relationships, the support of your families, your faculty, your staff, especially one another. You came together and huddled up, and then you turned out to help the sophomores and the juniors catch up while trying to set new foundations for our newest students. In a year, yes, our 75th, as DT mentioned, a year in which the college has taken many steps, many leaps forward, leaps that change our trajectory for many generations to come, your class, your class alone, played a pivotal role. You recommitted to the social warmth, the outward embrace of one another, the grace and leadership we all needed to get back, the sheer kindness of your class, the downright goodness. Early on in the pandemic, I think you'll recall, I challenged you all with a simple question. What story will you tell in the future about how you responded at the time to such devastating challenges? And 
today, you provide an answer to that story. You succeeded wildly in national and global competitions, awards, recognition from CMS missing national championships and we're not done folks by a post here or a second there. Model UN, ROTC, Fulbright, Rhodes, the most un outstanding undergraduate theses, many publishable of any college in the world. Massive peer coaching, tutoring, mentoring, the best questions at the best program ever at the Athenaeum. Incalculable real world impact on campus and off to eliminate racism and gender violence, lift learning in society, tackle climate change, build new social enterprises, new businesses, new policies. Opportunities you created for yourselves in the best fellowships in grad schools and postgraduate jobs and emerging leadership experience in business, government, and the professions. You have authored your own remarkable success. Ones you will tell, stories you will tell for decades to come about how you persevered during the worst pandemic in a century the worst disruption your college, higher ed, ever had. The 75th year in the college's history that may become our most pivotal ever. And you gave Theo way back to, literally, into your dorms, into the Saul Center, into dining, into Collins Dining Hall on a few occasions this year. That might be our little secret. <laughs> and you brought him and all of us back here with you. Three, here is anywhere you want to go. So I'd now like you, the class of 2022, to stand for your charge. See no end to belonging today. This is a commencement, a beginning, an opening. Take one powerful lesson out of this big tent. It is this. You will enter many new, frosty, intimidating places. Some cities I know you're going to, literally with sub-zero temperatures. With people who may not believe in you, at least not at first, not yet. You will also have that feeling of doubt. Embrace it. It means you're in the right place a place to challenge yourselves, expand your opportunities, grow your confidence. Whenever, wherever you have that feeling, I want you to whisper to yourself, I belong here too. I've been around a similar block, not this one, but one like it. I conquered that one so I can conquer this one too. I only have to bring CMC with me. I know how to earn my shot. I know how to make the most out of my spot, how to reach out to others in this new place, create this new here, lend an ear before I give voice. So, class of 2022, bring your heat to the cold gym. Turn it into your home court. Make fear your source of courage. Convert stress into your resilience. Flatten the barriers to build the deck for your new bridges. Traverse the deep rifts to bring us all together. Make the me that others want you to be into the I you want to become. Turn your inner circles inside out. Create a home for the many diaspora. Grow here into a place that is on the move, that moves you, and that moves with you. Now, I'd like everybody in the audience to stand for a moment because I want you to help the class of 2022 internalize this charge. And I want everyone here to repeat after me. We belong here. We belong, anywhere. we belong anywhere, anywhere we want to be, anywhere we want to grow. 
That is where we belong. Thank you all. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the 73rd annual commencement exercises. Please stand and remain at your seats while the faculty and graduates recess then follow them onto Pritzloff soccer field where we will have a celebration. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mm-hmm. 